economy, make this opportunity the opportunity to build or to come up with the 63 initiatives in this plan was truly. All right. Woo! I'll never have to do it once. Feel that energy. There's nothing better than tackling the climate crisis, talking about innovation, and talking about jobs. And that's what this event is all about. I want to welcome everybody to Sunset Park and the Brooklyn Army Terminal. My name is Andrew Kimball. I'm president and CEO of the New York City Economic Development Corporation. It is so exciting to be here today to make a new chapter in New York City's fight against climate change and continue our efforts, yes, that's right, and continue our efforts to not only tackle climate change, but really adapt our economy, make this opportunity the opportunity to build the inclusive, equitable economy of the future that we all want to see. Before, before turning things over to the mayor, uh, I just want to make sure I'm acknowledging some of the so many people, and I'm just going to name a few, but I was looking at this book this morning, and this is a big book. And the hours and hours and hours around the table with our colleagues in government, with not-for-profits, with corporate partners to come up with the 63 initiatives in this plan was truly extraordinary. But it all starts with leadership uh, in City Hall from Deputy Mayor Maria Torres Springer's office, leading housing, economic development, workforce development, just extraordinary in getting the team across government to work efficiently together. Huge shout out to EDC's partner and co-author of this report, Abby Jo Siegel, Executive Director of the Mayor's Office of Talent and Workforce Development. There are numerous other agencies and city organizations we worked alongside uh, to really bring this first of its kind plan. And, and you look across the world, you look at other great cities, some have tried. There is nothing like this out there. So I really hope you will take a look at this, at this book and set of recommendations. Uh, and then to our key partners in one of the key initiatives we're announcing uh, today, the Harbor Climate Collaborative. Uh, Claire Newman, the extraordinary leader of the Trust for Governors Island, and, and Lindsey Green, who is doing just an amazing job leading the Brooklyn Navy Yard into its next uh, interation. interation. Um, I also want to thank all the startup companies, the not-for-profits, the workforce development partners who are here today. Many of them are tabled. I hope you'll go around and talk to them. It's really extraordinary. It was awesome to be with the mayor. His eyes always light up when you're talking about technology, particularly when it involves AI and energy, uh, which we just did. Um, I've had a chance to collaborate with the mayor now for 20 years. Really lucky, both at the Navy Yard when I was there and at Industry City. This is somebody who passionately understands the importance of public-private partnership, of driving job creation, but making sure that we pivot our economy to be one that is truly inclusive. Uh, and it is so exciting and my honor to introduce the Get Stuff Done Mayor, Eric Adams. Thank you. Thank you. And I cannot, cannot tell you how much uh, I appreciate the long, long relationship that I've had with uh, Andrew and just watched him uh, all parts of his development of our city. Uh, when I go back and think about New Lab in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, I have to think about uh, Andrew, Andrew's vision there and allocating uh, the first million dollars as a uh, bar president as New Lab started and walking through a uh, new lab and watching some of the development. And as I was stating to the deputy mayor, deputy mayor um, Maria Torres Springer, that one of the missing components was the connecting the jobs to the community. That is in the heart of many of the uh, public housing, uh, the component of making sure those uh, tenants were able to uh, learn from the new development and technology and be part of the employment, employment uh, pipeline uh, was something that we should have developed more, and but we're learning from that now. A climate change is not only our environment, but it's changing the climate of those who are not part of the green economy. And to have uh, this amazing organization that I met some time ago uh, to uh, be here as well, Green City Force, uh, what they are doing. 
Green City Force is uh, so significant uh, because, you know, it, there needs to be a level of honesty with this conversation. When we talked about uh, climate change, uh, the people who are impacted the greatest from uh, terrible uh, uh, emission conditions, terrible environment conditions, uh, uh, terrible health conditions, uh, many of our uh, uh, coastal areas are impacted. Uh, black and brown communities were not part of the conversation. And what Green City Force is doing is showing these young people that this is an issue that impacts them. They really did not believe it was part of it. I met them years ago as borough president, and I was blown away by the initiative and what they were doing. And they are so energetic. They've become ambassadors uh, to other young people to say that uh, the climate change conversation is not a conversation that they are omitted from. And now this beautiful initiative here is going to further expand um, how uh, uh, green technology means green dollars and it means jobs. And that's what uh, Abby Joe is really showing of just to build out our pipeline and change the quality of the environment uh, in which uh, they live. So this is a, a really an exciting moment. I'm happy to be here. And the beauty is that I can just step back and let people uh, with the expertise uh, do their job, and that's exactly um, what they're doing. So to uh, the partners over at EDC, the entire team, they just keep knocking it out to park over and over again. Thank you. And the Office of Talent and Workforce Development, uh, we have to get people back to working. That is so important, and that is what we are focusing on, an entire team over there. Over there. Uh, today, we're here uh, to announce, announce the site of the future Climate Innovation Hub at Brooklyn Army Ter Terminal, and to announce the Green Economy Action Plan. Uh, that was this big book when you are bored on the weekend <laughs> and you want to flip through, uh, you could do so, but you're right. The, the thickness of it that's made of, uh, which I hope is recycled paper. <laughs> um, the goal is to bolster our rapidly growing uh, sustainability sector, which is important uh, to build out the infrastructure uh, we need to support it. That's crucial because you can, you can uh, expand the sector, but if you don't build out that infrastructure, uh, then it's not going to reach the level of expansion that you desire. And expand the workforce, jobs. Give real jobs, how people can find the duality of improving our environment, but also improving uh, their uh, living conditions. And these are good, well-paying jobs in the process. And New Yorkers have always used innovation, that's who we are, and we are not going to follow, we're going to lead from the front. We did, did it by building our economy of the future. We must draw, draw on our resources to protect our city. Uh, climate change is real. We see it every time uh, we see the coastal storms. And let's be clear, we are in uh, February, and you can go outside without a jacket on. Something is just not right. It may seem comfortable, but it impacts our growing patterns. It impacts uh, everything that we need. There's a reason we have several seasons in the year, and we need to make sure we protect that. We are uh, going to ensure that we look at the low carbon economy, build infrastructure that protects our people in our city, and create jobs and prosperity as we do so. The Green Economy Action Plan <clears throat> is about building for the future starting now. New York City has always uh, take upon, taken upon that initiative and have millions of both white collar jobs and blue collar jobs. Now we're introducing a new terminology in our society, green collar jobs. Jobs where you can ensure improving the, the environment is also improving our lifestyle. New York City is leading the way on new, this new category. So many of the white and blue collar jobs of the past are becoming green collar jobs of the future. And we're ready. <coughs> this new plan, will deliver more than 
12,000 green economy apprenticeships and identifies 21 key occupations that are essential to growing the green economy and providing pathways to economic mobility. From building resiliency projects and retrofitting apartment buildings to installing solar panels, EV charging stations, and wind turbines. These green collar jobs are already in demand. We must put people in the position in the pipeline to fill the jobs. And the numbers are clear. Over 400,000 jobs in the green economy by the year 2040. That means children who are running around on our playgrounds today are going to be filling uh, these green collar jobs in the future. We want to make, ensure that we are not going to miss the opportunities to educate, train, and position New Yorkers from all backgrounds to benefit from this new economy. We want everyone, especially residents from economically and environmentally disadvantaged communities to participate in this initiative moving forward. The Green Economy Action Plan goes far beyond education and training. That's what's really attractive of this for me. As I announced in our State of the City address earlier this year, we are using New York City's historic waterways to chart, chart a new course for our economic future. We have underutilized our waterways for so many years, and we are reinvesting and reexamine how they can improve our movement, our transportation, and our economy. So we are transforming the shoreline that made New York City the economic engine of this nation from the harp to the harbor of the future a harbor that will extend from Hunts Point Market in the Bronx all the way to the North Shore of Staten Island and include $100 million for the Climate Innovation Hub here at Brooklyn Army Terminal. And this hub will bring business development, incubation, and research to a 4 million square foot campus turning Sunset Park into a center for clean tech, innovation, and manufacturing. The sun will not set in Sunset Park. It is going to rise and rise in a healthy way. It will be home to over 150 climate tech startups and other green economy businesses over the next 10 years. The hub alone is expected to generate $2.6 billion in economic impact and create 600 jobs right here in this community while providing workforce training and job placement, particularly for local Sunset Park community. On March 18, we'll be releasing a request for proposal for partners to help make uh, this hub a reality. The Climate Innovation Hub will also partner <clears throat> with the Brooklyn Navy Yard in Climate Exchange, Exchange on Governor Islands. And we have just two amazing leaders at both Brooklyn Navy, Navy Yard and at Brooklyn, at uh, Governor's Island. I know Brooklyn would like to claim Governor's Island, but we all have to share it. <laughs> this uh, form a new climate collaborative, uh, which will unlock six million square feet of space for climate research, education, training, and space for companies to grow. Uh, connected by New York City Ferry, the Harbor Climate Collaborative will support the creation of 5,000 permanent jobs, educate and train 2,100 students, and generate $55 billion of economic impact. And it would transform the hub of the future into the global destination for jobs, tech, and innovation. And so again, I just really want to thank uh, Lindsey Green over at the President and CEO of the Brooklyn Navy Yard, Clara a Newman, President and CEO of the Trust for Governors Island, and uh, for the vision and partnership in bringing the next generation of green jobs here and, and everyone, um, uh, Maria, your team, Abby, your team, uh, uh, Andrew, your team, and just to complete uh, teamwork as we move our city and our community uh, forward. Uh, this week, the New York City Department of Transportation will preview part of the future as we open the city's first public e-battery charging station in Cooper S Square. And we're excited that here at the Brooklyn Army Terminal, we'll have another public e-battery charger station. So we're on the cups of a new kind of industrial revolution, and we intend to make sure that this revolution 
uh, does not leave anyone be behind and create new jobs of the future. Uh, we cannot fight climate change on our own. It must be a partnership. But working together, we can get it done. And I think the most important part of it, I just really want to encourage the young people from Green City, uh, work for us. Uh, you cannot solve global problems with a local mindset. And when you sit around your boardroom tables, if everyone around them look like you, talk like you, walk like you, and do the same things, then you're going to have a small view. But if your room is diverse, with different ideas and people and cultures and understanding, you can solve global problems. This is a global city with global leaders, and we must have the diversity in our boardrooms to ensure that we can have global approach to these problems. We are doing something great here in the city, folks, and we're not leading from the rear, we're leading from the front. That is what we do in New York City. The greatest city on the globe, two types of Americans, those who live here and those who wish they could. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, as the mayor mentioned, a chief component of this plan is ensuring we're building a pipeline of jobs and creating opportunities for all New Yorkers. That means providing training opportunities so these green collar jobs are accessible to everybody. How we do this is working alongside our partners in the private sector, but also in the not-for-profit space who have deep roots within the communities within this city. One of those organizations uh, that the mayor has been given a number of shout outs to uh, is the amazing Green City Force team. And it's my pleasure to introduce Executive Director Tanya Gale. Good morning. All right, good morning. This is fun. Thank you, thank you all. Um, so uh, I'm Tanya Gale, Executive Director of Green City Force, and at GCF we train young leaders to power a green and inclusive economy through service. These amazing folks that are here today and others who are all around the city today are serving their country locally as AmeriCorps service members, and they are building skills, learning about the green economy, and giving back to communities as they do that um, through service. They build farms, they grow food, they educate fellow residents, they learn from other public housing and low-income residents about a way forward, because we have have resilience in these frontline communities. We have leaders and folks who are in our program who show up every day and step into the world and give back to others while they make lives better for themselves and the people they come from. They are resilient, they are challenged with all kinds of issues that are real barriers, facing home, uh, housing insecurity, family restrictions, health situations, and yet they rise. They are phenomenal, amazing leaders, young leaders who need a platform to thrive and grow, and we're thrilled about this program and commitment and investment by the city. The Green Economy Action Plan is fully aligned with our mission, focused on a just transition our folks are graduating and they're learning about all these jobs you're talking about. They're learning about solar installation. They're leading in energy and clean energy roles, learning about urban agriculture, green infrastructure, building construction, you name it. And it's just like just the beginning. So we're super thrilled and grateful that the city is coming along with us. As Joseph said, the pioneers, although others came way before us, we're happy to be here and really look forward to the next chapter of what this amazing city will do, led by all New Yorkers especially our graduates. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Tanya. Um, and you're exactly right. It is going to take continued partnership for all of us to build this network and job opportunities for young people uh, with their eye on the future. And our final speaker I want to call up is somebody who represents the sort of innovation entrepreneurial spirit that's really driving the economy in New York City today. You know, the mayor loves statistics, and I'm just going to hit him with them again. More private sector jobs than at any point in New York City. Highest workforce participation rate at any point in New York City. One in seven businesses in New York City it started in the last 12 months, and it's because of entrepreneurs and innovators like Tia Gordon, who is co-founder and COO of It's Electric, a company born right here in Brooklyn, <laughs> whose mission is to create curbside charging network of EVs, especially designed for cities and urban environments. It's Electric has re received the industry's top accolades, both nationally and internationally and is piloting her technology right here at the Brooklyn Army Terminal 
and is a graduate of EDC's Founder Fellows Program, where we're really driving opportunities for diverse entrepreneurship in the innovation sec sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, Tia Gordon. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you to the Adams administration, Andrew, and the EDC for having us here. Um, here to speak today about the Green Economy Action Plan, which commits to 63 actions and public EV charging is one. My name is Tia Gordon. I am the co-founder of It's Electric. Our mission is to rapidly scale the urban infrastructure needed for the electric vehicle transition in every city and on every block. As we are the world's first EV charging company that allows cars to be powered by buildings. We're also the first EV charging company that revenue shares with every community that we deploy in, bringing the green of the green economy directly into the pockets of New Yorkers. Just 12 months ago, this was just an idea, and we needed to test it in the real world in a city that's notoriously hard to crack open. So we approached EDC and asked if we could pilot our technology right here at BAT. Flash forward one year, where It's Electric was just named the next big thing in tech by Fast Company, and the city solution of the year by judges of the Earthshot Prize. As Alicia Keys would say, Mayor Adams, only in New York. <laughs> Even better, our early collaboration with EDC was built on the grounds where we're standing today of the future Climate Innovation Hub, right here in Sunset Park, and has become pilot zero for the city's Climate Innovation Pilot Program. Our work with EDC has been a true partnership, and much more, a model for the city to pilot technologies with private companies and startups, enabling this collective to achieve the daunting climate goals with the crucial principles of speed and scale. We, together, are building an ecosystem that hopefully will just might save our ecosystem. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you, we'll, we'll, we'll open a, a few questions, but I think uh, Andrew really uh, broke it down uh, in a very simple way. Create the environment that we could uh, create uh, the technology and innovation of the future, and then create the pipeline for employment and execution of what we created. And uh, that is a real uh, sweet spot that we're creating here. So we'll take a few questions. Great, great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. Good morning. So my question is for New Yorkers who might see this story and perhaps they're interested in getting a green collar job, learning more about this economy, you know, getting the training, where do they go, how do they start? Yeah, Abby, why don't you sure. do your thing? Great question and really appreciate it. Um, good news is we're already doing a lot to really position folks for green collar jobs. So right here at Brooklyn Army Terminal, there's already a Workforce One Center. There's a maker space. Additionally, there's a lot of work being done on the Brooklyn Navy Yard, the Brooklyn Steam Center, which works with a number of high schools, really focuses on a number of jobs that lead, a number of trainings that really lead to the occupations in the Green Economy Action Plan. And that, and that, that is such a, a, a powerful question because uh, we sometimes don't realize how people don't know what's the first step. And, you know, as I move around the city and I, I ask people, you know, um, how would you go about finding a job? You know, where would you look? And it is really amazing that people don't know where to start. And so what Abby is doing now with our um, our job hiring halls. We did it for uh, city jobs. She's now expanding it for uh, local um, and private businesses because we have to start teaching people the basic, you know, what is a resume, how to write a resume, how to do an interview, um, what, is, what are the pathways. There's, there's, a, there's a Robert Moses mindset that we've built highways through communities and employment without any interest ramps. We have to start building interest ramps so that people can get on the highway of employment. Good, good job. See, the key is you put our team up front, the staff in the back, I mean, the press in the back. This way, we don't get all those questions. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. This morning, and this is a big book. And the hours and hours and hours. Before turning things over to the mayor, uh, I just want to make sure I'm acknowledging. 
feel that energy. There's nothing better than tackling the climate crisis. All right, woo! I'll have to do it once. The inclusive, equitable economy of the future that we all want to see. Before the extraordinary, but it all starts with leadership uh, in City Hall, President and CEO of the New York City Economic Development Corporation. It is so exciting. Talking about innovation and talking about jobs, and that's what this event is all about. I want to partner and co-author of this report, Abby Jo Siegel, Executive Director of the Mayor's Office, around the table with our colleagues in government, with not-for-profits, with corporate partner economy, make this opportunity the opportunity to build. Welcome everybody to Sunset Park and the Brooklyn Army Terminal. My name is Andrew Kimball. I'm